Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we're going to take a look at this quite rare CZ-2000 rifle. Now, this originates with the story of the CZ-58, or VZ-58, or rather CZ-VZ-58, which of course was adopted by Czechoslovakia as its military rifle uh, in 1958, and was used through the 60s and into the 70s, and afterwards as well. But once they got into the 1970s, they realized that, well, this design was getting a little obsolete. The Soviets had changed from 7.62x39, which is what the Model 58 used, to the new 5.45 cartridge. And the Czechs were looking at this and thought, you know, that, that 5.45 cartridge kind of looks like the way to go, and maybe they should develop a rifle to use it. So in 1977 they set about developing a domestically designed and produced basically AK in 5.45mm, and that was this. The code name for the project was Lada. That's a Slovakian women's name, and that was the name assigned to the, the both the rifles and the overall project. And they spent a remarkable amount of time working on this program, because it wasn't until like 1986, or 1984, I'm sorry, that the design was really finally completed. And that, I'm not sure exactly what was going on there, because that's seven years to basically make an AK with a few external changes to it. Now, I suppose I can't be too hard on them. The US took 12 years to put a box magazine in the M1 Garand, but I digress. Uh, in 1984 the design was completed, uh, or was greenlit, and they had the, the design down and they started to put them into production, had some prototypes uh, ready in 1986, and they started putting those through actual military trials. And there were some problems with the gun. It ended up spending a couple years in trials, and they went through three generations of design before they got one that really worked to their satisfaction. By the time that, that gun was, the, the testing was done, it had come through, it worked well, it was November of 1989. And well, if you're not up on your Czechoslovakian history, the other thing that happened in November of 1989 was the Velvet Revolution. This was the end of Czechoslovakia. Uh, basically there's a, a popular uprising in Czechoslovakia, kicked out the Soviets, kicked out the Communists, the country became its own independent nation, and as part of this, well of course, the army budget kind of went down. The new state didn't have the money to spend in the way that the previously existing uh, Communist state had. And so the whole the whole rifle program got totally derailed. Uh, there had not been, as far as I'm aware, there hadn't been any real development of domestically produced 545 ammunition in Czechoslovakia to support the rifle. Presumably they were going to get that going once the rifles were in production. So once the once the country split with the Soviet bloc, and then of course very quickly the Berlin Wall came down, the Soviet Union fell apart. All of a sudden a new 545 rifle doesn't really make much sense. So instead the natural thing to do, and, and this especially came back up in the early 90s uh, when Czechoslovakia, or rather the Czech Republic at that point, started to look towards NATO for possible NATO membership, 556 was the natural caliber. So they rebuilt the rifle in 556, which wasn't all that difficult of a thing to do. And that is what we have here. Um, in 1994, when NATO membership started to look like a possibility, they started to get more serious about a 5.56 rifle, and this was CZ's entry into the competition at first. They basically just dusted this thing back off and went, hey, we still have these 5.56 AKs. I mean LADAs, because they're not just AKs. Uh, but in order to make them sound a bit more modern, they had to come up with a, a newer, more futuristic name, so they came up with CZ-2000. And that's where the name of this rifle came from. So uh, let's go ahead and take a closer look at this. We'll pull it apart and I can show you the insides. Like I said, the closer you get to this, the deeper you get inside it, the more of an AK it really is. So we'll start on the left side here. Most of the things that are not standard AK on this rifle are visible from the outside. So first off, our serial number here is S3. Uh, that 94 is the year of manufacture, manufactured 1994. Uh, they didn't make many of these and they certainly only made a couple before this one. Now the selector switch back here is thumb accessible, kind of like, well, not really like a Galil. So a Galil has the selector coming out the bottom here. They put the selector in the side of the receiver. Um, as much as this looks or is mechanically an AK, parts don't interchange on it. So the selector here is interesting in that it starts, we have a safe position here, semi-auto is back, full auto is forward with a three round burst ratchet or complete dump the mag 30 round full auto. 
We have a dust cover mounted rear sight here. It is an aperture sight, which is pretty cool, on a tangent leaf. Uh, it goes out to 800 meters. We can stretch that up like so, and it's got a couple of reasonably thick wire protectors there, so if you drop the rifle uh, on the top you won't actually hit the sight. You can see the aperture right there, and then there is also the night vision version when you flip it up that just has, it, it's like a big open pistol style of notch sight. Originally there would have been some radioactive paint uh, in those two circles, so the thing uh, luminesced at night. That is used in conjunction with this hooded round post front sight, and if I rotate that around, that is the radio, the uh, luminous uh, radioactive front sight, uh, locks down and in place when you're not using it, like so. In order to make the gun more compact it does have a folding stock, so we pull this little nub button down and then the stock folds into the side. That's just a big old latch right there to keep it locked in place. On the front end we have this little lanyard loop style of thing there, and a hook on the stock, so that locks it in place. Push that in and you can unfold the stock. Unlike the other AK variants that have uh, left side safety levers, the Czechs just decided to get rid of the whole big dust cover safety lever entirely on the right. So there is a little bit of an opening in the, the action here, which maybe isn't a great thing, but they were apparently just didn't like that whole big lever safety and ditched it. As for magazines, the original uh, 545 magazines were steel. By the time they got to the CZ2000 project they started making transparent polymer magazines. And what's interesting about this is they actually, uh, the original 545 magazines are completely interchangeable with Soviet 545 AK magazines, which makes a lot of sense um, for, you know, if you were going to be have, have serious military ties with the Soviet Union? Well hey, make your ammunition and your magazines compatible with them, that's exactly what NATO has done. However, what's kind of cool is when they went to the 5.56 mags, they left the top of the magazine identical. So a standard 5.45 mag will lock into the CZ2000 just fine. Um, these mags aren't, the, the curvature is a little bit different for 5.45 and 5.56, and you can see that if I line them up like this. You can see there's a little more curvature to the 545 mag in the back. So this mag is a 556 magazine. I loaded it up with 30 rounds. Nothing gets wonky. They all sit nice and square. The follower works. The feed lips are set up just right. In fact you can see the feed lips are just a little bit different. So if you look at this section right here compared to that, um, and the angle of the feed lips on the inside at the back, uh, this is a legitimate 556 magazine, but the locking surfaces are identical in dimension to 545. Anyway, I'm going on a bit at length about that, but it's kind of a cool, um, cool choice in features that they made. At the front end we have a, a really a very sort of check-like muzzle brake there, uh, bayonet lug. Not sure if this is interchangeable with a VZ-58 bayonet, uh, but it certainly was set up to have a bayonet. In total they actually had three different versions of the Lada or the CZ-2000, which were basically uh, synonymous with the AK-74U, the AK-74, and the RPK-74. So they had a little submachine gun version with about a 7 inch barrel, they had this, the rifle version, uh, with a 15 inch barrel, and then they had an RPK light machine gun version with a 22, just over 22 inch barrel and a bipod. People are going to ask why this has a blue upper handguard, the answer is I have no idea. I suspect it's a replacement part that someone made at some point. Um, because these guns are totally unobtainium in the United States, but uh, ultimately I, I don't know the explanation behind that blue handguard. Anyway, cycling it is just like an AK. Disassembly is rather different. Disassembly is basically all contained in this pin. It is a rather VZ58 looking pin, which makes sense. Uh, we'll push that through, it's captive, so I can pull it out to there. And then at this point I can take the dust cover and slide it backwards and off. I can then take the recoil spring, push it forward to unlock, just like an AK there, pull it out. You'll notice it has a two-part guide rod, just like an AK. I can then pull the bolt carrier and bolt out, just like an AK. 
And then I have a gas tube, just like an AK. This is a long stroke gas piston rotating bolt gun because it is just like an AK. You can notice there's a bulged front trunnion here, just like an AK. Um, there's the trunnion itself. The top of the trunnion here is a little bit different to have the, this mounting point on it. But once you start looking inside the receiver, this is very much an AK receiver. The rear trunnion is also a little different in design to accommodate this different folding stock. But the fire control group is like an AK, but with the addition of a three round burst ratchet right down there, right in there. You have a pair of rails welded into the receiver here and here that support the bolt. We have our hardened ejector pin or ejector blade right there. This thing, it, it's interesting how much work went into this given that it literally is mechanically an AK. And you can certainly see that in the bolt and bolt carrier here as well. So there's the bolt carrier. There's the bolt. It's a little grimy. But that is no doubt an AK bolt. Even the gas piston is very much like an AK. It's got that little bit of wobble in it, like an AK should. Roll pin basically uh, holding it in place there. Front end is AK. So what they've done on the dust cover to allow stable mounting of sights is add a reinforced section here that has a little lip on it. You can see that right down there. And then that slides into two little grooves under these lugs. You can just see them right there. So when the top cover is all the way forward, it's locked in place pretty effectively. It's not like on, uh, on most typical AKs where it's just sort of sheet metal tension holding it in place. This actually has uh, locking grooves and, and guide rails to hold it in place. So there you have a CZ2000 completely field stripped. Not a whole lot to it. Once you understand the AK, you certainly understand this rifle. Eventually, the CZ2000 would be dropped entirely by CZ, and it was replaced with what we know today as the 805 Bren, uh, which is still a gun in development, still has a few issues to work out. Uh, but these guys, these CZ2000s, never went into all that much production, and they are fairly rare guns, and it's really cool to get a chance to take a look at this one today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you do enjoy seeing this sort of thing on the net, please do consider checking out my Patreon account. It is the folks there at a buck a month who really make it possible for me to travel about, find awesome rifles like this one, and bring them to you guys. Thanks for watching.